Video games are a billion dollar industry. If you ask any kid what they want for Christmas, chances are they're gonna tell you some new game that came out. But the Giga Chad Hypervolt Deluxe MLG Edition for $100, which probably gets you a couple skins, some guns, maybe a character or two, and probably a $25 pass to Mr. Beast Burgers so they can order the Carl Grilled Cheese. There it is, man. I'm not gonna lie, this look like the patty from Teletubbies. Bro. But the problem is, with so many people scrambling to make games, especially in the indie scene, there is a lot of overlap. And when I'm talking about overlap, I don't mean generic man with gun one or generic man with gun two, but now he has a parachute. I'm talking about when you get two games that are very, very identical, that it is obvious that one game is stealing from another. It's basically the equivalent of copying your friend's homework from school or copying a YouTuber that also does daily topics. Now, the cost of such a heinous crime is usually the death sentence instantly. And if not, Twitter exile, or at least a seven day ban from your favorite Gmod server. But surprisingly, with this topic I'm gonna to talk about, there has been no legal action, no ramification, despite the fact that one game is pretty much all but yoinking from another. So for context, there's this upcoming game that I'm really excited for. It's called Ill. It's a first person horror shooter survival game. Now this game, even though you may not have heard about it, has had some insane hype. Jesus! Now this game you might not have heard of, but it does have some insane hype. There actually isn't a lot of footage at the minute. I think there's like a couple screenshots, some short teasers, but so far the game looks really, really good. It's got some polish. Now I get to be apprehensive. There's about 500 indie games coming out every week at this point, but you know, this does have some backing. For example, the protagonist of the game is voiced by the guy that voices Leon in Resident Evil. And also the soundtrack is by Lorne. If you don't know who that is, by the way, he does some amazing, like, like deep atmospheric electronic music. I, in my spare time, listen to his music a lot, but if you've never heard of him before, it means it's good. Any project he's tied to, it will be good. The devs have promised a lot of things as well. For example, the monsters you go up against, they're gonna transform real time. There won't be, you know, some cutscene where they turn into a monster off camera and they just swap models. It's all gonna happen right in front of you during gameplay. And one of the reasons why everything in the game looks so good and so polished is because the CEO of the company Cloud Games he used to make short films. He even has his own art station where you can see all of his past work. Now, to those who are skeptical, I, I get it. Like, I I'm just giving context here. This isn't, I, I sound like I'm shilling the game, but I don't mean to. I understand how Scorn went. Do you remember how amazing that game looked? How hyped up it was? And then it came out and it was just complete mid heaven. Scorn. The one sad thing is about Scorn that I've noticed is like, there are lore videos that are getting hundreds of thousands of views at the minute because people played Scorn and th there was so little substance that they're, that they're just craving for like anything else. But yeah, whether the game is a massive stinker or not, like isn't the point of the video. It's just to explain what kind of game it is. Now there's a YouTuber I see my recommended sometimes. He's called Math Chief. Now this guy makes great content. What he essentially does is grabs indie games that no one's really heard of and gives it a platform, gives it a bit of promotion, briefly plays the game or just talks about it. Now I already knew about Ill and the development process behind it, but what I didn't know that Math Chief has brought to light is there's another game that is incredibly similar that is coming out sooner. Even the developers of Ill themselves as said on Twitter that these guys are copying their project. Even some gaming websites are making article on this game thinking that it is the real ill and that it has a gameplay trailer, but this is not the real game. And again, I don't even mean like reusing some similar environments or assets. Like they literally have the same name. The game that we're hyped for is called Ill. The upcoming game that's coming out sooner that's worse in every way is called Ill Ness. And you could say it was an unlucky mistake all you want, but just look at the gameplay side to side. One of them has insane polish. One of them just looks like a Unity asset flip game. It's not even called Illness. It's called Ill Space Ness. <laughs> and if you compare the logos as well, they're just trying to ride off the hype of Ill. Now, what Ill's done for their marketing, like I said earlier, they've barely shown anything. And I like to call this the Death Stranding effect. Because with Death Stranding, they basically show no gameplay until a couple months from release. You saw these cutscenes, these huge scales, the budget, and you go, oh my God, this is amazing. And then the game comes out and you go, wow. Anyways, and then you probably played it for five hours and never touched it again. I just want to say for comparison, I've beaten Death Stranding. I have completed it. I do want to do a main channel video on it at some point, but I'm just building up like the mental struggle to even accomplish that because to do everything in that game, it is such a unfun time sink. The thing is with ill and illness, that there's not like one jarring thing that like makes it obvious it's a copy. It's all the little things, you know, they both run off on Real Engine 5, which is fine. I mean, it's a very commonly easy to access use engine, but again, it's like the same engine 
the same logo, the fact that the enemies are also incredibly mutilated in both games. The top comment on Math Chief's video actually raises a very good point as well. If you're like me and you play boomer shooters or you're just a literal boomer, you might have heard of Ion Fury. Great game that's essentially like a spiritual successor to Duke Nukem built on the same engine, the build engine. Now, that game was originally going to be called Ion Maiden, you know, because the fact that the character you play as for seven or so hours is a woman. But then Iron Maiden, the band, even though Ion and Iron are completely different words, they got scared and then they threw a lawsuit at Iron Maiden, forcing them to change the name to Ion Fury. They also mentioned that they felt that their logo was being stolen. If you would like to compare on screen now the logo to Iron Fury and uh, Iron Maiden, I don't think they look that similar. They're not even spelt the same. But no, 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 seriously, I, I, I do get it. I do understand, you know, like, like a small video game company and a huge heavy metal band. It, it's so easy to make a mistake there. I, I get why they threw the lawsuit at them. This is one thing I hate is how like you will have actual copying from different companies and no one bats an eye, but then you get these stupid lawsuits thrown out. I don't know if any of you remember the lawsuit regarding the slaughtering grounds. This goes back to quite a while ago. Basically, there's this game that came out called the slaughtering grounds. It, it, it sucked. Like, it sucked more than I suck on your mother's nipple. And a game journalist, just said the word game journalist and ironically, Jim Sterling made a video covering it, basically saying that the game is terrible, stolen assets, it all sucks, and then gave it a 1.1 1 .1 out of 10. And then the game's creators, Digital Homicide, tried to sue Jim Sterling for $10 million. Now, obviously that lawsuit got thrown out. It was just comedically bad. It got dropped. But then they also tried to sue 100 people on Steam for leaving negative reviews. Imagine trying to sue people for saying your game's bad. I mean, I get it. Steam reviews, game reviews in general, they, they do suck. You will have people that will like get this amazing game and they'll downvote it because they don't have the specs to even run it. I understand. It can be frustrating. But you don't throw a lawsuit at them. Thankfully, in that situation, Valve saw some sense and banned Digital Homicide from Steam for being abusive and hostile to customers. I like that word abusive. Like, like it really downplays the fact that Digital Homicide did the equivalent of enacting World War III on the Steam user base. Honestly, my main goal in life is to secure enough money to start my own video game company and then just sue everyone else that also makes a first-person shooter.